You're welcome back. Uh, right now we're going to take our final hot topic and uh, that is the fact that federal government is set to sanction trade associations hiking food prices excessively. <laughs> Those are the words. Federal government set to sanction trade associations hiking food prices excessively. And we have uh, to discuss this with us, uh, Mr. Frank Eleanya, a technology and media news editor at Business Day. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Eleanya. Yeah, good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Okay. All right. Now, they're saying there will be sanctions to trade associations hiking food prices excessively. Let me hear your thoughts on that before we go into the nitty-gritty of how this is going to work. Yeah, so um, there are bad actors here in the market. Um, we know that um, given what um, the situation is in the country, with inflation at uh, about 22.9%, um, but then it is it, it will be interesting to know how the government plans to go about um, um, sanctioning these guys or the measurements that they want to put in place um, to see who are uh, um, the people that are taking advantage of the market. Because um, like it or not, um, everyone has been impacted, including the traders themselves, where they get these um, goods from and uh, what they have to do or the logistics that they have to go through or pay through to get these goods to the market. So um, it will be interesting to know what measurements the government wants to put in place to clearly identify who are the bad actors. But um, there's no gain saying the fact that everybody has been affected and you will expect that prices of uh, goods in the market will go up with uh, fuel selling at uh, 617 in some places and 568 in Lagos. Okay, well, but is, is this where to start when you want to address the issue of inflation? You know, clamping down on the people that you think are, like you, the words you used were taking advantage of what is happening mm -hmm. right now. If you take advantage, it means that there's a cost somewhere else that is giving you that kind of confidence to do what you want to do. So is this You're where the government should start? You're absolutely correct. Um, we have said in the past that um, you don't you don't start solving problem by trying to cut off uh, um, or trying to start from the head. Oftentimes, that's where the government um, tends to start from. To do, they want to go after those who are taking advantage of a situation that they themselves have created. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, um, it is not the traders that uh, took inflation to where it is right now. It is the actions of the government or the inaction of this present government that has brought inflation to where it is um, but then it, uh, the government is looking for a scapegoat you know to um, to blame for for what is happening so it wants to go out after those it feels like oh they're taking advantage of the situation but then if you want to address this situation that you have created you need to go back to the roots what have you done wrong how do you as in, what, first of all start admitting that there are um, places that we haven't done well and then start correcting them um, we have spoken about production levels being terribly low in agriculture um, security issues are still persistent. The government are yet to solve it. States are still suffering from kidnapping. Um, bandits are still running rampage. Um, terrorism in the northern region of Nigeria is still there. Um, so these things have yet to be addressed, which, which has prevented many farmers from going to their farms, and which has also, uh, um, by extension, led to food shortages in the market. So when you don't have supply meeting up with demand, what you're going to essentially find is, um, is uh, inflation in the market. But um, added to the fact that um, subsidy um, was removed from petrol products and then added to the fact that um, the Nara floating um, came at the same time or almost with uh, um, the petrol subsidy removal. All of that has uh, contributed to part of the pressure that we're currently feeling. Uh, Naira is selling now at uh, 800, uh, at, uh, at uh, above 800. The pounds is selling at, uh, it's selling at above uh, 1,000 Naira. Um, those are not those, those are not um, situations that you look at and you and and you have the um, the courage to go after people to say why are you jacking up your prices knowing fully well that these people have to buy these things from the market and have to go through transportation to bring them to the market. So um, I, I 
think that the government is just trying to look for who who to blame for the uh, for the uh, um, problem that it has caused in the market. Okay, uh, well, you you have talked about problems that the government uh, itself caused that is giving advantage or that are giving advantage uh, to the people or opportunity to the people to do what they're doing, and now the government itself is trying to clamp down on them. Help us identify some of these things that need to be addressed if they don't have to go and start from the people who are hiking the prices uh, because of what the government has done. What are some of these things that the government needs to address so that these people will not have the opportunity again to do what they're doing? For, for Firstly, the government has to address the issue of a foreign direct investment, which is where the whole foreign exchange um, issues are coming from. We don't have enough investors coming into the country, and there's no way you're going to have enough investors coming into the, um, into the market when the enabling environment is, is, is very stifling. Businesses are still suffering from the problems that they suffer um, many years ago. Taxes are very high. Um, electricity is practically non-existent. Um, 24 hours electricity is practically non-existent. The roads are terribly bad. In Lagos currently, um, everywhere you turn, there's a pothole waiting for you. It's a safe the state governor um, uh, took a break or is, or is taking a break. Um, is doing practically nothing about the roads. And, um, and, and that also goes to other states in the country. You know, so infrastructure is at a very poor state. And that contributes to the amount of money that people um, pay to take their goods from one place to another. Um, we are also talking about issues around uh, um, um, taxations, multiple taxations from different government agencies. You know, these guys are not contributing anything, but then they want to collect money from what you have made in business. You know, and uh, several things. Uh, um, talent is uh, is also a problem because that's, if there's shortage of talent, of course, recruitment levels will be uh, um, will be um, low, or or the cost of talent will will increase. So um, there's several issues to you know, to address, and then also importantly. Um, is the cost of governance that we have continuously uh, um, pushed that the government should cut down on. But recently, we have seen the government uh, appointing um, um, aids, 20 aids, uh, different aids here and there, and we're yet to even get the list of the ministers that, um, that uh, should be in their positions as at now, you know, trying to put these things in place. Uh, we also saw the government also uh, trying to get uh, an 800 million loan in, in the, that they calls uh, palliative. But even then, we now have uh, also the National Assembly trying to also get a palliative for themselves of a 70 billion naira. So when these things don't align with, with your developmental goals, there's no way uh, um, you can address um, issues around inflation um, sustainably. So it's important that government, first of all, that makes the sacrifice that it has been asking Nigerians to make. Um, so far, I haven't seen any form, any any indication that the government plans to make any sacrifice. Um, it is still running around with the um, seven um, aeroplanes. You know, it, it has even indicated that it wants to sell anyone. And we now have many more people joining government who, that are going to contribute to the payroll. And one, uh, uh, I'm also hearing that the government wants to increase uh, minimum wage to 100,000, uh, which I think is a terrible idea because you don't have the funds to do that. Um, it is likely you um, they are projecting they want to go and borrow and keep borrowing more and 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 more. But if the, if they think that's going to be the palliative that's going to help the situation to uh, um, to, to to reduce what they are only um, preparing themselves for is hyperinflation. So um, there are different indications that the government needs to sort out, and they haven't yet done that. That just uh, issue reforms here and there. You know, and the, the, these reforms have no roots at all so far. Yeah, I, I know you're not a government spokesman. Uh, we are wrapping up right now. I know you're not a government spokesman, but let's just give them the benefit of that. Why do you think that any time it gets to a point where people are crying out that the prices of goods are going too high, the clampdown is always targeted at the lower cadre 
of the um, business rungs of the ladder. They, they come back to the farmer, they want to, they want to clamp down on the farmer and say that you must sell your rice for lower, you must sell your yams for lower, beans for lower, and they never talk to the big companies that actually make the mega box. Why is it always those at the lower level and not the ones at the bigger level? Is there anything that suggests that it is more difficult to um, sanction these other bigger players in the industry than the smaller ones? It's an important question that you ask. Um, first of all, I don't even think that sanction is the way to go, whether you're doing it for the bigger companies or whether you're doing it for the smaller companies. Um, but why do they always go for the smaller guys? Is uh, is perhaps because um, the smaller guys are easier to get. You know, um, they don't put up so much resistance. They are always afraid when government comes to them. They are the least to go to court. You know, um, you can't just go to, say, um, a Dangote, for instance, and say, I want to sanction you. You, you, you have to be taken to court, and uh, they've got the resources to, um, to prosecute or, or to, to go on and on and on with you, you know. But um, the lower guys don't have the resources to take the government to court. Either they are afraid, either they're also thinking that if they try, that, uh, if they try to do something like that, um, government um, officials who clamp down on, on the little that they have, you know, so um, they are often the first to respond to such threats, you know, so and uh, that's why the government will always um, target them to, uh, um, to, uh, to get or to extract some of these uh, uh, um, decisions that they make, you know, but again, I'd say it is, the, the, it is not the best thing to do to always think about who to sanction, first of all, you you have to look inwards. You have to think about what have we ourselves, the government, done to make this situation the way it is. If you clean up inside, it is easier for you to then start thinking about what you do outside. Because what then happens is that when people see see that you're being sincere, that you're taking, uh, um, that you're walking the talk, what then happens is that they too will start adjusting. And it's easier when you come to them and say, um, look, you need to stop what you're doing. You need to uh, um, revert back to this. Um, I think this is a, you know, there is a stakeholder buying. What we are dealing with is a large uh, distrust in the society. Nobody trusts the government because the government has not proven itself to be trusted. And when you have a situation like that, it, um, you, um, you always find yourself trying to wield the stick, you know, but then... There comes a time when you have to sit down and say, um, can we uh, um, use a carrot and stick um, uh, um, approach, you know, try to bring these people closer to see where does it pain them. You know, these guys, um, the farmers that you're talking about, the small business that are talking about, they've got there's several pain points that they're dealing with. They've got the education of their children. They've got um, food even to put on their table, even though they're farmers, they too have to eat. You know, and they too have to also wear clothes. They too have to go to places. They have to, they have other um, extended family members they have to deal with. You know, uh, and it is not always um, the case that they just wake up in the morning and say, we want to um, take advantage of the government. Something pushes them towards that uh, um, um, position. And that's where, where a listening government have to come in to say, come, let us talk. Let us see how we can help you um, get out of, this, or, uh, out of this quagmire. And when government does that, it becomes easier for you to extract uh, uh, um, good behavior from these um, guys. Oh, well, <laughs> there's nothing we can do right now. We're going to wait and see what the government plans for us. But as a people, maybe we'll just call on ourselves to be patient enough for at least three months and see where it goes. We'd like to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elena, for coming on the program today and helping thank us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We were talking with Mr. Frank Elena, technology and media news editor at Business Day, and this is where we hope to wrap it up on the show this morning. But before we go, as we usually <clears throat> like to do, we'll give you the quote for the day. Always think outside the box and embrace opportunities that appear wherever there might be. Those are the words of Lakshmi Mittal. 
That's how the show has been this morning. We're hoping that we are, you're going to rejoin us tomorrow, uh, Friday, for another edition of The Breakfast. For now, on behalf of the entire crew of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji Singh. Thanks for being there. <laughs>